Yeah, it's the archivist, y'all, exclusively interviewing Inez Jasper. What's up? And who is the singing, soulful songbird Inez Jasper? What's up, everybody? How y'all doing? And you've been owning your incredible powerhouse voice for many years since 2006. Share on the EP Gold and what it did. Well, back in the day, I was uh, just finishing up at the University of British Columbia at UBC here in Van City and uh, had connected with a big arts crowd down here. Like there were so many natives doing their thing, hip hop, visual arts, drama, all kinds of stuff. And so after connecting with a few of them, connected with this hot girl named Okalani, man. Big shout out to Oka, Van City. Um, amazing voice. Uh, connected with Manic Wonderful and started doing some music and some writing. And actually, we also sat down with the famous Danny and Lizzie Nelson. Amazing songwriters out of Van City, totally blowing up. Um, so back at that time, we sat down, did a six song EP. Started performing around the city and it was just so rad to do some really soulful um, hip-hop hyphy inspired R&B and uh, write with some amazing writers so it was a good time and then sing soul girl dominating with more than 2,000 units sold definitely the message has been reaching across Canada elaborate on the project and how it's gone well that project started uh, while I was in school I had been writing and writing and writing and I hadn't really let on to anybody that I was writing because when I was going to school, it was a big move for me to move from the Lower Mainland out from my traditional Stella territory, away from my family, my community, um, my culture and all of that. And it wasn't until I moved to university and away from everything, I realized how valuable that was. And so in order to cope with that change, I started writing, 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 and my journaling started turning into songwriting and just had all these songs written and at a certain point everyone was like yo you gotta throw these down and so went down to Kaya downtown east side Vancouver threw down the songs wrote an album pressed it and things just kind of took off from there and then many red carpet events share on some that you've been a part of and nominated for a Juno and winning four APC MAs Inez yeah totally crazy so after the album was dropped in December 08, coming into 09, I had submitted to the Aboriginal People's Choice Music Awards uh, televised on APTN. I was invited to perform there, of course, their red carpet um, won those awards. We won four out of five that we were nominated for, and that was crazy. Uh, I traveled out there with Magic Touch, Stephen Pitawanaquit, and of course my two dancers did a crazy performance. It was a lot of fun. Um, traveled across North America, gigging different urban centers and uh, lots of reserves, doing motivational speaking, singing, all that kind of good stuff. And then found ourselves in Newfoundland at the Junos, crazy red carpet event. That was amazing, you know, walking with different artists that have been grinding for a long, long time. Big name artists, especially as an indie artist, it felt good to know that I had worked that hard to find myself there, brushing shoulders with those guys. And collabs you've been a part of. Dreezus, Me and You, World Goes Round with Winnipeg's Most on the Goodfellas album. Make You Mine remix with The Tribe Called Red. Working with Fawn Wood. Who else you putting in a lot of work? I've collaborated with so many people. Also Sundown Stylistics up near Kamloops. That's where I got a lot of my experience with writing and collaborating on, with hip hop. But when John C. connected and called me up, we had... Uh, done a track on this album here it was called world goes round john c charlie feta and brooklyn totally ripping it up on all three of their tours of course missing one member each time but it was all good they even rolled through my town in chilliwack and i got up on stage and rapped with them as pregnant as i was at the time women we have babies and uh it was a good track produced by stomp it was a good time those boys are truly talented. It was a real honor to be featured on their album. And now the remix with A Tribe Called Red. Yeah, what happened was I was working with a label and I did the song called Make You Mine. And uh, I wasn't happy with the way that it turned out. It was like really overproduced for my taste and it was really bubblegum. So I thought, you know what, I don't want to just throw this away or not release it. So um, I called up my friend DJ Indian and I was like, hey, can you uh, 
there was some stank on this song and so I sent them the stems and they totally remixed it. Man, I love it. They made it so rad. Check it out, SoundCloud, Tribe Called Red. And so far, just the beginning, a guest host on the streets radio, interviews with APTN and the province, and share about your experience at the Aboriginal award shows, as well as being a role model with the National Aboriginal Health Organization. Well, way back, that was probably, yeah, 2008, when I was pregnant with my first son. He's four and a half now, so that was a while ago. We traveled out to Ottawa, and that's where I first competed in a big, uh, it was a talent contest called We Got Talent, and Digging Roots, they were on the panel for the judges, and I had competed singing the single Breathe when I was only partway done recording the first album, Sing Soul Girl, and I won $10,000. And so that was really an amazing opportunity. I was able to reinvest that money and um, put it into pressing Sing Soul Girl, getting that album out. And then from there, Naho, with the role model program, brought us out to the APCMAs. And that's where I just thought, okay, it's now or never. Press a few songs that I had finished and promoed myself till death out there. I think I was like seven months pregnant and I was like just slanging CDs. I did some showcases as big as I was. But, you know, life goes on. I thought, you know what, just because I'm having a baby and I'm having a family, my career's got to move forward. So that's how I got involved with the APCMAs. And the newest record, Burn Me Down with John C. Take Over, Fallen Soldier, Down Came the Rain, working with Emily Estrada, and production with S.A. Trackworks. Whoa. Yeah, it's crazy. Check this out. Uh, photography also by Carolina Turek, and as well, my outfit, which is crazy, inspired by my family's crest, which is a snake, because I had to make a comeback. Strong Aboriginal woman, right? Um, was designed by a beautiful lady in Chilliwack. But um, this album was a real comeback after a bad experience with a label, and for many indie artists, they know that, you know what, sometimes you just got to do your own thing. But uh, I brought a lot of the songs that I had been working on, sat down with S.A. Track, where it's we rewrote, self-edited till death, and came up with the 10 tracks that we have on here. And it was so rad to work with Emily Estrada. She's making major moves in LA right now. Check her out, look her up. As well, uh, Fawn Wood, who's also three albums deep with Canyon Records. She uh, is a traditional singer, um, distant cousin of mine as well. But uh, we did a song called Fallen Soldiers together and that's just about um, giving homage to men. I feel like there's so much attention given to women in this day and age you know, to support missing, murdered Aboriginal women, uh, violence against all women, that kind of stuff. But I really feel like, you know, it needs, we need some balance. We need to support men, a lot of men that get sucked into a negative lifestyle. And so that's what Fallen Soldier is about. And uh, she helped me do that song. And music videos, Dancing on the Run, Burn Me Down, You're on the Aboriginal Countdown, They're Watching, Let's Hear Your Other Large Accomplishments. Yeah, Dancing on the Run was a crazy song because when we were writing that, it it really evoked a lot of emotion for me because growing up in the community we talked a lot about you know keeping our culture hush hush and I just thought man you know we're past that we're here to celebrate and we're gonna practice our culture do I die I don't care what anybody says and that's the attitude that my family instilled in me and that's the attitude I have about my music so it was really rad to do dancing on the run music video we filmed it right on my res cops showed up because of some whack noise complaint four in the afternoon but they couldn't do nothing because the potlatch bands lifted as well we uh about a month later we flew out to six nations out in ontario and filmed my next music video for burn me down that was a huge production with big soul because that's the title track on the album and uh i'm not even gonna let you guys uh tell you any details you guys can check it out inezjasper.com and your dancers let us know Oh, well. How'd that I, come about? <laughs> what happened was um, I had gone out to Toronto to do some work with um, Big Soul and I was attending Canadian Music Week and some stuff and I had gone to a video shoot on the set of a friend of mine and there was a choreographer that I met there, Lenny Len out of Toronto. Big shout out to him and the crew out there. And uh, we just got to talking, totally connected on some old school 90s R&B and earlier, just like feeling the same kind of groove. 
and just decided to work together because we really clicked. So he also directed the music video Burn Me Down. He did the choreography for me on the Aboriginal Day live show we did this past year and uh, got together a crew of really solid dancers right out of Toronto. These guys had competed on dance competitions and much music. They're amazing. Uh, they'll be joining me for the Truth and Reconciliation Commission show that'll be coming up here at the Coliseum. We're going to blow the roof off that place. And your best powwows you've attended, Rockin' Aboriginal Day, performing at Cree Niska, fashion fundraiser, and the biggest crowd you've ever rocked. That's debatable. You know, Aboriginal Day Live is always a huge crowd, but so are the Aboriginal Awards because, of course, we're in the MTS Centre, it's broadcast live. But I think this past year at the Forks, Aboriginal Day Live with APTN is live broadcast and it's growing bigger and bigger every year. And This year, apparently, there was about 40,000 people at the Forks live. Crazy! People as far as your eye could see. Amazing stage and lights, big screens, and then, of course, um, about 300,000 people tuning in live on APTN. So I'd say that's probably my biggest crowd. And it's amazing. You just feed off their energy and it's so positive. And the best powwows you've attended? Best powwows? That's a good question. I used to dance back in the day and we travel all over, but uh, Kamloopa is always my favorite. And I've rocked that stage a few times at dinner break and at the end of the powwow. Big shout out to Sundown Stylistics and Rest in Peace BMO. You know, I have a little story about him. Beams is uh, my brother-in-law who passed away not too long ago, and he did hip hop in the Vancouver scene up in Kamloops and was an amazing artist. He's amazing. His wife is also an MC, and uh, come Kamloops, I know they had a set that year at the end of the powwow, and uh, I had to ask the powwow committee too if I could do a bit of a showcase, and they were like, oh, sorry, you know, Sundown's doing the only one. And so I was up at the front showing some love when they're performing and Beams just looked down and saw me and he was like, you know what, for our last song we're going to bring up a special guest, my friend. And he gave me the last song of their set at that huge powwow, people from all over Indian country there. And I'll never forget that gift. It was so generous and so I keep that close to my heart. Remember that when I come across other artists that I see grinding and I believe in their talent. I want to share that generosity, that goodness, because I feel that we need to support one another. So rest in peace, BMO. Thank you for sharing that love. And your best musical memory you've been part of or contributed to? The best musical memory. Good question. They just top one another, one after another. But you know what really gets me is when... Like this album that we did, um, I took a bit of a shift and went for a more of a mainstream pop sound because I really remember as a young girl growing up listening to the radio because of course I couldn't afford to buy a lot of tapes or uh, CDs when they came out. And I was that girl dancing on my bed singing into my hairbrush and you know, listening to artists on the radio, I didn't really know of any in mainstream pop that were native or Aboriginal, Métis, Inuit, anything like that. And so when I rock, shows whether they're big or small the best part of it is when I can connect with fans parents that come up to me and say you know what I used to like your CD but my kids play it so damn much I want to break it they say my kids love you and I'm so happy that they have someone to look up to who's native and making major moves and at my last show I did I gave away a CD to the best dancer and it was this little girl she was just rocking out and uh, I gave her a CD and she screamed all the way across to uh, her mom and was like, I got a CD. And her mom inboxed me and was like, you know, she's got your poster on her wall. She looks at you every day and says, I want to work hard just like her. And that's, that's the best memories I have is when I have an opportunity to give back with my music. You got a little sample for us so people know what's going on. Yeah. Well, let me see here. There's so many uh, good ones that I could do. But you know what? Burn Me Down. I'll give you a little sample of that because I just... A little bit of history about that song. It's, it is a love song, but I've been waiting so long to really do a good project where I can just really let it rip with the production, and that's what that song's about. Burn me down, burn me down, burn me down. I let you, I let you. Burn me down, burn me down, burn me down. I let you burn me down. Oh, oh. I waited a lifetime to feel your 
fire, feel you burn me down. I waited a lifetime to touch your fire, feel you burn me down. I'm not letting go. Oh, oh. I'm not letting go. Oh, oh. I waited a lifetime to feel your fire, feel you burn me down. That was amazing. Wow. Thanks. And you have anything to say to North America? North America. Native people are booming. The biggest growing and fastest growing population. We're coming at you with some positive things. Work with us. We have something positive to contribute. I hope that you can listen to my music and a lot of my friends. Check out my page, www.inezjasper.com. Putting up some links of some of my good friends. Check us out. And uh, we'll see you soon in the mainstream. And you got any shouts? Oh my God, shout outs to so many people. And I'm going to forget so many people because I'm a mommy with a brain like a sieve. But Sundown Stylistics, everybody in East Van, Coast Salish Territory, all the territories in British Columbia, North America, all my people who have put me up, brought me out to their community. Big shout out to my family who holds it down with my two babies, my husband who uh, holds down the family styles, archivist of course, bringing stories to all of our music, and of course all the fans out there supporting our music. Thank you so much. And shouts to Inez Jasper, and this is the Archivist, and you already know the name, y'all. <laughs>